Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, the only audio redacted that you can truly trust. And it is time for episode 16 of my Let's Play of Paradise Killer, in which we're about to go see a dog about his plan. What's a dog doing here? Woof. Your name tag says Bear-chan, is that your name? Bear-chan? Woof. You look expectant. Are you after treats? Woof woof. Here you go. Enjoy. Woof. Good girl. Is that, wait, is that it? Woof woof. A blood crystal. Why do you have a blood crystal? I don't know why I even question the things that happened on these islands anymore. Good girl. Thank you, Bear-chan. Woof. That seems odd to me because, uh... Honestly, a dog having money is the least strange thing we've seen all day. You've already had traits. Whimper. I guess- okay, that's it. Uh, I don't know. I was um, expecting that to be a little bit more impactful. I was expecting to perhaps to have a full conversation with this uh, completely mundane and ordinary dog, which glows like the beautiful sunset that we all uh, love to see and uh, which are primarily caused by atmospheric pollutants. So I guess uh, I will resume my general wandering, my uh, my gentle rummaging, my nosing around in the dustpins of the destitute, my uh, casual theft. Eighth Street Rose by Apoc. The Eighth Street Rose. That bar. Those times. Gone forever. When did everything get so far away? It's gradual. That's the trouble. I like the sound of that one. And now it's time to finally grab this whiskey of the surprisingly large number of collectible whiskeys that are available in this world. Which I believe I spotted many episodes ago when I almost entered this area from that direction. Way of Blood Bar, 25th Island Sequence. Why do you think there are so many mysteries? Everything creates a mystery. Human, animal, plant, mineral, everything creates a mystery. It's a byproduct of existing. Not even living, just existing. Everything produces a mystery that we want to solve. Why do we want to solve them? Human nature, most things are ambivalent about mysteries. Rocks create mysteries, but a rock doesn't care about mysteries. Humans are unique. We need mysteries to live. Without mysteries, we would go insane. But a mystery can make you go insane. <laughs> That's the knife edge we all walk. I have a sneaking suspicion that I've seen that one already. What I don't know... An answer lost. Aged for two years and has a nutty flavour. Often served to celebrate accomplishments, however fleeting they may be. What I don't know is if I, if I found that one in the, like, one abortive episode that I had to... that, that didn't record properly and that I had to re-record. Um, you win a prize if you guess which episode that was. But, yeah, actually, can I just actually check? Do I have all of my whiskies neatly lined up in here? Whining Devil Gothic Second. No warning. Code. It'd be nice if these could be subdivided by type. Hair Trigger. Chaos Domain. And An Answer Lost. It looks like I only have one of it. So presumably, uh, I'm just insane. Well, insaner. Right, uh, Dead Nebula. I feel like I've missed a few of these. B5. Don't have a funny joke for that one. Or indeed any jokes whatsoever. Not that I ever have funny jokes. Sanity. A delicious green tea that is known to help you remain calm and collected in the face of cosmic insanity. Other flavours were introduced, but all failed. I have always felt that matcha has an unpleasantly bitter flavour, so I imagine it would be very effective as a grounding tool. Oops. That was lucky. Oh, fuck. That wasn't. Oh well, I suppose it's ultimately no threat to me to just gently get my ankles wet again. If there's no falling damage, I wonder if you remain wet after falling in the water. 
as some kind of uh, grand cosmic punishment for just fucking about too much, I guess. Anyway, um, there's a bunch of these little buildings that I haven't fully explored, so I'm just going to continue... Rude. I'm just going to continue wandering around until I find... Or at least I see what there is to find. Uh, everything that's left. Aha! There is a Shinji over there. I really need to unlock the air dash. I'm actually not sure where the other uh, uh, unlock locations are. I know that they're around. Anyway, for those of you keeping track at home, I'm feeling somewhat better lately, but I am still recovering from whatever horrible illness I've been suffering from recently. Anyway, uh, why not talk to a ghost? Will you join us? Join who? Join our group of citizens fighting for more power. That's a noble cause. What kind of power? We're fighting to end corruption and free the workers of the agri-fields and the deep factory. Free them? Are they slaves? They are used as pawns in a game of corporate corruption. Spent and used for the benefit of the powerful. We must end it. Are you aware that there are no citizens left on this island? I'm still here. Your existence is more of a technicality at this point, no offence. As I was escorted to the ritual slaughter to end this island and bring in the next, I made a vow that if there was any afterlife, I would continue to fight. I guess that's why I remain. I'm here to deliver our message. And what is that message? I have evidence of the corruption. I took it from the factory. May I see it? I was at the farm when the marshals dragged me to the slaughter. They ripped the envelope from my hand and tossed it aside. Please, will you find it for me? I'm a big fan of running errands for metaphysical. Thank you. Remember, the envelope will be somewhere at the farm. Please find it and bring it to me. I have. It took some finding. Thank you. Have you read it? Have you seen the truth? Will you help fight corruption? Your evidence is compelling. I will join your cause. Really, you will? Oh, it's such a relief. For years we've wanted someone with influence to join us, and we finally have that. I feel like I've achieved my purpose. I can't take this to the next island. I'm already fading from this world. Please, you take it. Why did that demon give it to me anyway? Take it and build a better world. I mean, that's kind of curious because this ghost is unwilling to call the citizens of this place slaves, but in what respect are they not slaves? They are kidnapped and brought here against their will and forced to work against their will under threat of annihilation, and then later they are all annihilated anyway. I can understand a uh, discomfort with bandying around words like slave, which are quite loaded, or at least should be more loaded perhaps than they are, but in terms of like material reality uh, almost all of the inhabitants of this island are slaves pretty sure I can get up on this roof here and talk to this Shinji there we go oh look, I missed an item on there we've definitely been here before so I'll go grab that afterwards How many dead bodies have you seen? Enough to last a lifetime. That must be a lot since you're immortal. A lot has happened on these islands. Really wicked shit, I bet. Oh, I'd love to have seen it. You're weird, Shinji. But then... I mean, I actually, I suspect that Shinji is about as well adjusted as one can be when one is an infinite uh, incorporeal psycho demon from outer space. Incoherent abandoned diary fleeting fragments of a citizen's memories of their previous life. Must be hard adjusting to the island. Alright, okay. Let's see. So I think that's this sort of quadrant thoroughly explored. Actually, I can... Oh hey, there's a dead nebula. If I, if I use my rarely applied ability... Hmm. I'm pretty sure those are all fairly far away. It looks like I've missed quite a lot of things around here, actually. I might decide later on to just do a roundup where I, after I finish exploring this place organically, I'll head back through and attempt to find all of the individual bits and bobs that I have specifically missed. I look like it was around here. Yeah, see, I suspect most of them are going to turn out to be blood crystals. 
And to this day, I don't know if the blood crystals actually are limited or if they spawn randomly. All right, let's check out this little plaza after we go get another drink. My uh, obsessive collection impulse must always be indulged. After all, if you ain't collecting, you ain't nothing. That's nothing. That's Nobody says that. That's just noises that I'm making with my face. Drinks cost blood crystals. That's what it says every single time. Didn't read to, need to read that out at all. C2. This one looks like it's uh, Crimson Acid ba uh, branded. Relic obtained. Acid's favourite. A premium beer marketed by the arcane idol Crimson Acid. Citrus flavoured and light. Perfect to drink in a bar with friends or at home alone, contemplating all those things you're going to do. I'm not really much of a beer drinker. Is that normal? Is that is that is that how it usually feels to drink beer? Mind you, I personally would be reluctant to uh, consume any beverage branded with uh, the words acid. Actually, no, that's absolutely a lie. If someone offered me like radical battery acid, a fruity beverage, I probably would give it a try. A four, the world's most common size of paper. Kill the thirst. A crisp, light beer. The thirst must be killed so we can move on. Also, it's interesting to see that you can just get... Um, you, can, you can just get beer out of a vending machine, which truly indicates this is paradise. Creeping Flora. Explorers in a forbidden valley discovered a breed of plant that had been sealed away in a vault. Now warriors patrol the edges of the valley to keep the plant at bay. Is that on the island? Let's see. These, uh, these tower blocks up here are probably pretty self-contained. I think I can take a, take a good gander at them in a moment. But uh, what I'm actually going to do next is go talk to Crimson Acid herself before I forget. Glinting Golden Crown. A sacred reward for pyramid envisioning. A citizen was very faithful. Hmm. Is that a pyramid like these? This looks like it's one of the shrines to... Aha, there we go. Ah. So the green crest goes in here, which means there's probably another green crest. Which will unlock whatever this is, which is probably the tablet. The shrine tablet for the sacred goat. Which uh, indicates that there, I guess, there is, I guess, more than one kind of uh, shrine. There aren't just the ordinary pyramids. However, they do venerate the uh, the goat, silent goat, indeed, above all other. I think above all other gods, since the silent goat was the one that uh, gifted them what they needed, the esoteric abilities that they needed to create this uh, paradise outside of time and space. Hmm. Oh, so we've been down there. That's where the, uh, what was it called? Midnight Blue or something? One of these things. Uh, shrine is. <laughs> that sign won't stop me because I can't read. Hup. There we go. It's not the world's most difficult puzzle to solve. see. Ah, oh, this is a foot spa. Fantastic. Through my foot spa, I've obtained a foot spa. Now I shall discover some ability or other, I suppose. The water in paradise is good. I feel like I've got a little pep in my step now. It feels like if I was in the air, I could just dash around. Air dash unlocked. Please tap the sprint button while in the air to perform an air dash. These islands are weird. Oh, hell yeah. Speedrun tech enabled. C2? Relic 
Water. Water, plain water. Stay hydrated. Take a nice big gulp of cold water. Enjoy a few minutes of doing nothing but drinking water once an hour. What is wrong with you people? Just drink water. Uh, a rare moment there of the um, direct contact between the voice of the developer and uh, the ears of the player. Not in the mouth of Shinji, but in fact directly from the uh, beloved vending machine. Reminding us all that we very much need to drink water and, I assume, also touch grass from time to time. Right, so... I'm gonna... I'm gonna... You know, I'm gonna talk to Crimson Acid next time because we are running a bit low on time already and every conversation with these people takes an extremely long time. So let's just have a little review. There's these blocks that I need to investigate. And I think I've seen everything back that way. So I should probably take these blocks one at a time once, I, once I'm finished uh, talking to Crimson Acid, which means that I should probably head back over here real quick. Ooh, oh, I missed an item. Oh, the other green. <gasps> One thing I have noticed uh, is that there is a remarkable amount of a remarkable amount of serendipity in my run of this game so far. Uh, I do seem to stumble across things when I need them. Oh, just a blood crystal. Is that it? Seriously? There's blood crystals just lying all over the place, and yet. Uh, I suppose I am to be lauded for solving a puzzle, and as a reward, what do they give me? Why, it's a single dollar, much like these single dollars I'm finding lying around all over the ground, all over the place. That air dash is pretty fun, though. Right, so if I come all the way back to where we started, I can have a look at these tower blocks, which are much denser than the other ones we've seen. Ow. In fact, I'm just going to have a quick look with the uh, meditation tool. I'm not going to use that very often, but it is uh, it is useful just for checking to see if I've missed anything in an extremely localised area. Which is going to be important because I don't intend to uh, run around and come back very often. Every single time where I use meditation, uh, which as I said before, I'm going to try and highly limit my usage of, uh, and all I find is a goddamn blood crystal, I'm going to be fundamentally disappointed. I don't want blood crystals. I want uh, weird little bits of information about this strange place. Hmm. Thought I could stand on that little ledge, apparently not. Have to take the long way around like some kind of peasant. But yeah, I am wondering if this game is ever going to sort of realistically examine Lady Love Dies' position of privilege within this society, because I think that one of the reasons that she's an exile, one of the reasons they've chosen to write her that way, is simply to attempt to sidestep the issue. Um, you know, this lets her be something of an outsider to this society, this lets her be, um, you know, this lets her have things explained to her or for her to learn about this world at the same time as we do. Um, and supposedly it's, it puts her as an outside perspective, you know? Uh, she can be used to examine or criticise this society and its and its oddnesses and its um, vicissitudes and terribleness. Because she is observing as an outside observer. But that's not true! She lived here for hundreds or thousands of years. She's as much a part of this place as anyone else. The fact that she... Beautiful blossom. When the trees blossom, citizens gather to give praise by letting blood directly onto the tree to fertilise it. But, uh, what was I saying? Um, the fact that... You know, the fact is that she is a part of this society, and a very privileged part of this society. The fact she was exiled from it after having lived in it for a very long time doesn't change the fact that this is fundamentally where she is from. Her point of view is fundamentally changed and fundamentally inflected by 
the, her position as a privileged member of this society, and... Grim Lotus. The lotus is a frightful plant that strikes fear into the minds of even the strongest demon worshipper. And in addition to that, she is also something else I was going to say, but I can't remember what it was because I foolishly clicked on an object. Um, but yeah, so she is... Ah, no, I remember. She is not simply someone who was born and raised as a person of extreme privilege in a society of extreme uh, inequality. She chose to be here. Almost all members of the Syndicate chose to be here. They came to this place from the real world, at least... As, at least as far as we can tell, based on the, uh, the biographies of the ones that we have access to so far. That means that she saw this the inequality, the cruelty of this world, and chose to um, actively become a part of it. Hey Shinji. Hey love dies. What's happening? Just enjoying the island, you know? I mean, obviously I hate this place, but you've got to make the best of it, haven't you? Oh hey, the theme. If you ain't looking on the bright side, you ain't living. That's optimistic. If you're not optimistic, you've got a problem. Life's too short. All of us in the Syndicate are immortal. Well then, you've got far bigger problems than being optimistic. Anyway, can't stay here yapping. I'm a busy demon. Okay, so we've got active confirmation that uh, all of the members of the Syndicate are immortal. But not the citizens then? She didn't say everyone in the islands is immortal. She said all of the Syndicate are immortal. Does that mean that the islanders live and die in real time? Because we were def we were told that time has no meaning here, and that the island the the citizens are kind of always preserving clocks and things pointlessly. That time has no meaning. Oh, that oh oh okay, that's a fish ghost. That is just straight up a fish ghost. Joyous fish food. One of the syndicate's social experiments was to create different social spaces around the apartments. There was decreased violence in this apartment. Feeding animals makes people happier. <sighs> See, again, this is not like, this is not some kind of clever revelation, some kind of genius secret. Like, people are more willing to uh, submit to their captivity and being entrapped in this horrible framework of a society if they have things that make them happy, that relax them, that cheer them up. And this is what I was kind of getting at in a previous episode with regards to problems of late stage capitalism and just I say that but like actually at the during the industrial revolution at the point at which mercantilism kind of turned over and rolled over and coiled itself and became capitalism there was this very much this idea that anyone who wasn't a member of a privileged class was just a replaceable cog to be jammed into a machine and worked for 16 hours a day and um, what we have at the moment are people trying to absolutely bring that back and um uh, I don't have anything else to say on that at the moment beyond just that it sucks and is awful and terrible and that you get a lot of wealthy people in a horrible capitalist society wringing their hands and going, why is why, why are all these poor, miserable poor people so miserable and poor? Um, you know, what experiments can we do to try and figure out how to improve their lot? And it turns out if you just let people have nice things, um, it's a lot easier to bear the misery of existence. Anyway... That is not any kind of coherent political thought. This is just me rambling because because I haven't recorded an episode in like five days and I've forgotten how to do it. Anyway, let's grab this. Gleaming Male Idol, a collectible card of an amateur pornographic actor. Underground pornography often springs up in the ap apartment blocks. Well, I can't blame it. People, people taking photos of themselves and, you know, stuff for fun, I think usually has a better vibe. Let's see. D5? Damn, you're telling me this vending machine has five dicks. Aesthetic water. A water filtered through volcanic rock for absolute purity. There are no volcanoes on the island. That one exists in real life. I've definitely seen aesthetic water on sale. Anyway, so, uh, join me next episode when we are going to talk to the ghost of a fish. 
Uh, the only blessed woman on an island full of uh, devil worshippers, I guess. Probably some more Shinjis, and um, then I'll do something else, but I don't know what yet. So, uh, join me again later, and uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye! If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, and share. I also stream on Twitch, and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.